I'm beyond nervous this morning. <laughs> I've, uh, someone once told me that after I'd, a uh, short time after I'd announced my calling to preach, he said, if you ever get up there and you're not nervous, he said, you may want to think about things. But Amen. the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a living God. And I told him at Davis Port, I said, every, every word that I say out of the stand, I've got to answer for one day. So uh, you all pray for me this morning. Again, I'm beyond nervous. I'm going to give just a, a testimony. I feel like I'm preaching to, as a family reunion. <laughs> so... So you all over here, I'm leaning on you to bail me out on this side over here. So you helped me <laughs> this morning. But I don't have nothing new. There's a preacher come up churchy, so I don't have nothing new to, to bring. And I don't, well, I don't want to hear anything new today. Well, it's, it's the very same Jesus today that he was yesterday. And he's going to be the very same tomorrow that he is today. And uh, But we uh, we desire your prayers this morning. I, again, I'm beyond nervous this morning. I, there's something. I remember about 11 or 12 years ago, I went to a little church out in Columbus, Ohio, and I got to, is a foot washing and communion service one night, and I was there, and I'd done something that night that I'd never done, and I, I never thought that I would be able to do. I, I'll be honest, I didn't think I had it in me to do it, but... But as we got down, as we washed our brother's feet that night, I got so happy, I got, I shouted. <laughs> And I've been shouting ever since. Amen. So I thought with that, you know, the Apostle Paul tells us over in the book of Romans, he said, for if the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. He said, the very, he said, if the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, he said, that very same Spirit that dwelleth in you that raised Jesus from the dead this morning. Friends, let me tell you something. It's something to be excited about. Amen. It's something to shout about this morning to know that the very same Spirit that lifted Christ from the dead is the very same Spirit that quickens our mortal bodies and brought us back to life one day. Amen. I want you to know today that I feel good in the Lord today. You know, one day we hear it our whole life. And, and I may move around a little bit. I, I Again, I get excited, so I I got I got a little excited last Sunday, and I, again, it was the first time for everything, and I ended up jumping off the stand and just <laughs> took a little running fit, and uh, I thought, well, the preacher, one of the brethren said Wednesday night, he said, my goodness, he said, I didn't know you that you had it in you, and I said, that wasn't me doing that, <laughs> but it was the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit moves inside of us, there's only so much that these mortal bodies can contain, can hold hold it in today. But I want you to know one day that I'm looking for a man to come. We've been here our whole life. I've heard, oh preacher, I've, I've heard that my entire life that Jesus is coming back. Well, I got news for you. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back after a church without spot and without blemish. But if you would, turn with me to Psalms 95. and just I'm just going to touch on it for just a moment and we're going to see where the Lord takes us this morning. But in Psalms 95, and, and the Lord just put this on my heart just a few moments ago and it kind of goes right along with the message but he said oh come let us sing unto the Lord let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms for the Lord is a, gr is a great God and a great king above all gods and I'm going to stop right there and I want to talk this morning he said for the Lord is a great God and a great king King, a great king above all gods. And you notice this morning how he's got that little, how he's got above all gods, he's got that all gods in little g. Friends, there's no other gods but one. I serve one true and living God today. I remember when I was lost and I was out in the world of sin. And let me tell you, pray for me this morning. I can already feel it coming on this morning. But I remember as I would go down the road and I would see a billboard, I would see a sign, Jesus is Lord or Jesus is King or Jesus is God. And I would think to myself, I thought, who is Jesus and who is God? I couldn't differentiate between the two. But let me tell you something this morning. I'm glad that I know 
Him this morning. I'm glad that I know Jesus Christ, that I have Him this morning as my personal Savior today. I want to tell you this morning, oh, if the Lord would be our helper today. You know, I've never, I've been preaching the 27th of this month will make eight years that I announced my calling to preach. And I've never learned how to preach yet. But I've, I'm trying to, I'm slowly learning a little as I go to get out of the way when the preacher does show up. I remember I got it down at Bell's Chapel Church and I remember as I, as I got up one Sunday morning and I said, well, I'm just, I hadn't been preaching but just a few months and I, I got up and I said just a few words and I said, I'm going to get out of the way and I looked back over at my assistant pastor at the time and I said, I'm going to let a real preacher take over this morning and as I got out of the way and as we was going out of the church house that morning, there was a sister come up and grab me by the arm and next thing I knew, she had her finger right in my face and she said, don't you ever say anything like that again. God called you to preach. He wants you to preach. He expects you to preach. Glory be to God this morning. I thought after that, I thought, you know what? I thought she's exactly right. God has called me to do something. I want you to know this morning, my job used to require me to travel quite a bit and I remember as I was going down Interstate 59, going down through Montgomery, Alabama or somewhere through Alabama and I remember as I was going down the road that Sunday morning I got up and I tried to say I tried to preach a little bit and I remember as I, as I sat there and I sat back in my pew and, I, and I, as I went and sat down back in my pew and as I sat there the preacher got up and I sat there in the pew and I thought my goodness I wish I could preach like that man does and at that very moment the Lord told me he said son I don't want you to preach like him I want you to preach the way I want you to preach he said if I want you to preach like him I'd have never called you to preach and that's the very same way it is this morning but I remember going down Interstate 59 one day and I want to give you a little warning on how the devil how the adversary is working today how he's deceiving people today you see the only power that he has is what God has given him to have when he told Job the, when the devil came to Job the Lord told the devil he says if thou considered my servant Job he says for the, the devil says you've got a hedge around about him I can't do him no harm you know that very same hedge that he's got around Job that he had around Job he's got around you and I today Amen. he's got around you and I today he can't bother us friends let me tell you the apostle Paul says don't give place to the devil I've heard it said down through so many times and even said it myself I thought I've heard it said you know the devil is working harder today than he ever has before I don't think he is I think we're giving him more place today than we ever had before we're giving him more place to come into our lives to come into our churches to come and destroy us he said he come to steal kill and destroy in that order that's what he's out to do let me tell you he come to kill steal and destroy us today let me tell you when the apostle Peter when the Lord appeared to the apostle Peter he told Paul he looked at Peter and he told Peter he says do you know that the devil would sift you as wheat but I held Satan as a lie and fall from heaven this morning let me tell you this morning he says but I you to know today I'd have never thought 21 years ago the very church that I was married in that I would ever be pastor at one day I want you to know this morning I'm 51 years old I know I look 21 but I'm really 51 today but I want you to know today when God called me to preach I never thought that I would be pastoring in the church and where I'm at today but you know 
God has got a work for you and I to do. He's got a ministry for you and I to do today. Well, preacher, He's not calling me to preach. Let me tell you something this morning. I want you to know today, He calls you to do something. He calls you to help the brethren today, to encourage one another. Have you been around someone? I think I see that woman trying to follow me around the camera, and I apologize, but I try to stand still, but I just can't do it sometimes. But I want you to know this morning, who is the Psalm 24? Who is this King of Glory today? Do we know Him this morning? I want to read. I want to read a little bit over in the Gospel of Matthew. This over in the Gospel of Luke this morning. I ask you if you would just bear with me for a minute. But Jesus spoke a parable, and He says, "But ye, but He willing." He, let me back up here. He says. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? He answered and said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, Who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, And I want you to know this this morning when he said he justified himself. You know we've got people today trying to justify themselves today in everything that they do today. In everything that they do today they're trying to justify themselves today. I want you to know I remember going back and there was a time I remember my son got saved and they used to have a, a judgment house they called it down in Ashland, Kentucky a Unity Baptist Church was the name of the church big church and I remember as we walked in there we went in as a church group one evening and we walked in that evening and we sat down and we wrote our names upon these little postcards and handed them to somebody and they took us in groups of like eight people per group went through there and they put on a play and they had four people in this play as we went, as we walked through there and two of them went to heaven and two of them went to hell and I remember as we walked through this play as we walked through this judgment house we went through one we went through one room and this it was played as hell was you walked into hell and friends I want you to know this morning hell is forever torment I've heard people say before I've heard people say down through time well I'm just going to go there with my friends I'm just going to go there and I'm going to burn up friends I want you to know this morning for hell is forever torment meaning it goes on and on I want you to know today I don't know if there's any lost here amongst us today I don't know if they are, if they are or not I don't know your heart today, but I know the one that knows everything about us today. I know the one that knows the very hairs on our head today, knows exactly what we need today. But as we walk through there, and I remember we come into this one place called, it was heaven, and there's this man, and boys, I tell you what, if there was ever a man that had the Holy Ghost upon him, this man, they, they found the right one because he was full of the Holy Spirit when he come upon us and he put his hands upon our shoulders. He says, welcome in to the joys of the Lord. You know, one day, we're not going to have another chance. One day, there's coming a day when we're going to stand before a righteous judge and give an account of our lives. And you know what we're going to say? Nothing. We're not going to say nothing. The book of Titus tells us, for the very God that brings salvation has appeared to all mankind today. I want you to know today, we will not be able to stand before this righteous judge one day. Say, Lord, I did not know. I didn't know anything about you. I never knew nothing about this, what I needed to do. But I want you to know this morning, 
Again, you pray for me. Jesus, as he spoke the parable, he talked about the Samaritan. He said there was a certain Samaritan. And let me tell you, I'm going to try to get this out this morning. So again, pray for me if you would. He said there's a certain, certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place came and looked on him and passed by on the other side but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him and went to him and bound him up bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine and set him on the set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again I will repay. Which now of these things thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves today. I want you to know when he said there was a certain Samaritan in church, I want us to look at this this morning. He said there was a he said there was a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho one day and fell among thieves. And I want us to look at the thieves that come to this certain man. I want us to look at these thieves. And you pray for me if you would. But the, but he we look at him. There's the thieves come and we look at that as being the devil today and how the devil come to steal, kill and destroy you and I today. How he come to take our lives today. But there was a certain man. He said, the Bible says there was a certain man from Jerusalem to Jericho. I want you to know one day that you and I was on that road from Jerusalem to Jericho one day. We were fell among thieves. We was among the devil when we was living for the devil today. I want you to know that there was a good Samaritan came by our way. There was a good Samaritan came by our way and had compassion upon you and I when he came to us and he helped us. He bound our wounds. He cleansed us up. He made us free. When the Bible says, for the Son of Man shall set you free, you're free indeed today. Glory be to God. Aren't you glad that there was a good Samaritan came your way one day? That there was a good Samaritan. He came out. shouting so when the Lord 
came to this good Samaritan when the Lord appeared to this certain man on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. You know, with the Lord's help today, there's not a thing that you and I can't overcome. There is not... You know, we hear... We hear so many times, we hear so much about COVID. I'll just be honest with you. I'm sick of it. I'll just tell you, Jack. I don't know about you, but if you told me all of you were still positive this morning, I don't care. I care about your well-being, but I'm not afraid. Because let me tell you, I got trust in the Lord Jesus this morning. I've told them at church, some of them may frown. I believe a lot of them may frown when I say this. The church, I've been to other churches before. But you know, I have yet, in all my 15 years of serving the Lord, I've been down, I've watched them baptize people in the creek in the dirtiest old water hole ever was. I've seen them. I remember when my wife got saved and we went out to Yatesville Lake and baptized her. I think it might have been October when that, was, that happened. The water was cold. I have yet to ever see, and nor I don't think will I ever see, if you're doing the Lord's commandment today, you will not get sick this morning. I have never seen someone go down to the water hole. Preacher, what are you talking about? I'm glad you asked I'm going to tell you. Preacher, what are you talking about? I have yet to ever see someone go down to the water hole. I've heard, and I've not seen it myself, but I've heard people say they've had to chip the ice out of the creek to baptize someone. And yet have I ever heard of anyone getting sick over that today. Now, I'm going to go one step farther this morning, church. If you're coming to the house of the Lord today, I don't care... You know, I don't know how many times. I think it's more than 300 times. It's quoted in the Bible. Fear not when the Lord Jesus... The Lord Jesus said, fear not. Amen. Fear not. I don't believe, friends, to this morning that one of us can walk in this house if we come here looking upon the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to walk away sick. Amen. That there's not nothing going to hurt us today. Amen. What was it the Lord told Paul when Paul preached on Mars Hill? He said, I want you to, the Bible says how Paul, how he preached for a very long time. And the Lord says, I want you to preach right on. The Lord says, I want you to preach right on. He said, keep it going. He says, nothing will hurt you. He says, fear not, I am with you. You know that very same Lord that spoke the very same words to Paul are with us here today, church, this morning. Amen. Glory be to God. I am so thankful this morning that I serve a risen Savior today. You know the Bible tells us, the Apostle Paul tells us over in Corinthians, for if in this life only we had hope in Christ Jesus, we're of all men most miserable. You know, if it to stop on the cross, if our Lord, if it had stopped at the, at the cross, we'd have been all men most miserable today. Right. We'd have been all men most miserable today. And Paul wrote over in the book of Ephesians, he says, without hope, without God in our lives today. I remember we used to live on top of a hill down at Fallsburg. And I remember several years back as we was on our way to church one Sunday morning. I remember as we was coming down that hill, there was a big snow on my wife looked over at me. We started down that hill. And I was going a little too fast. I started in it too fast for what I should have. I shouldn't have said that in front of her. But she looked over at me. I remember she looked over at me. She said, you think you ought to slow down? I didn't say nothing. But I thought, uh, I'm trying to slow down. I can't. As when our truck had spun around, we come off on the main road backwards. And that's after we got down, there's a thought that went through my mind. I sat there and I thought, and I thought, boys, is it worth it? We could have got hurt today or even killed or even hurt or killed someone today. I thought, is it worth it? You know, what if the Lord, when He was carrying His cross to Calvary, what if the Lord had stopped and said, is it worth it? Is it worth it today? You know, Scripture doesn't say this, but I want you to know this is how I want to believe this morning. If it had just been me, Christ would have died. Amen. If it had just been you, Christ would have died. I believe, and again, Scripture does not tell us this, but I believe when they, when they laid that cross down, I want you to know, when they laid that cross down, 
I weigh about 180 pounds. They'd have had the biggest fight of a 180 pound man ever was fighting them trying to get me down on that cross. Friends, I believe when the Lord just laid right down and stretched his arms out for you and I. They did not force him. They did not make him. I believe he laid it down. And if it had just been me, he'd have done it. If it had just been you, he would have still done it today. I'm glad he didn't say, that he didn't stop and say, is it worth it? I don't know about you. But I'm glad it was worth it. That he thought I was worth it one day. But as a sister used to sing a song down at Bell's Chapel all the time. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I'm so thankful this morning that when he was on that cross, I was on his mind. I want us to look this morning. I thought about the man that fell among thieves. And we looked, the Bible says there is a Levite. A certain Levite went by one way and said he looked upon him. And there was a certain priest went by and he didn't even look upon him. And we hear about religion today. Religion does not save a man, but salvation this morning. We look at salvation today. Salvation is not a thing. Salvation is a man. It's the man Jesus Christ this morning. It is the man. Jesus Christ this morning today. I am so glad that he thought I was worth it, that he went and he died upon that cross for you and I, that he paid a, a horrible, humiliating death for you and I today. I want, I want to, before, I, before I'm, about, I'm about finished, but you, you bear with me just for a minute. Sometimes I get a little long-winded, so you may never have me back. I don't know. But I thought about, I thought one day, I thought when the, we look back in the old scriptures and we hear about a man named King David and how King David, how he went, how he went. He had a friend. He went to a house. He said he had a friend named Jonathan. He says, how can Jonathan was killed out in battle and how King David, how he went out, how he went out to the, he says, how can I pay? He says, how can I show my friendship to this man. He said, I want you to go. He said, I'm going to go to the house. He went to the house of Zeba, I think his name was. He says, are they not one here? He said, are they not one here in the house of Saul that I can show kindness toward today? And you pray with me if you, bear with me just for a moment if you would. I'm going to try to get somewhere with this. But he says, I, they went to a house of Zeba and he says, I, are there anyone here the house of Saul? And Jonathan being the son of King Saul, we hear about King Saul how he said that he's got a son, Mephibosheth. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but he says, Mephibosheth said he is lame on his feet. How he was dropped when he was five years old and became lame on his feet. He says, I want you to get Mephibosheth. I want you to take him to my house. He said, I don't, he's going to sit and he's going to eat from my table. He says, he's going to eat from my table continually. And friends, I want you to know, he said, he's down in the house called Lodabar. They went to a house, went to a place called Lodabar. Then let me tell you what this morning the word Lodabar means no pasture today. Do you remember being out lost in the world having no pasture, no dwelling place today? Do you remember when the king when the king come in he says you're going to eat at my table when Psalms 34, 25 tells us for I once was young and now I'm old but I have yet to see the righteous forsaken or his seed beg bread. There's been many times in my life that I've not had two pennies to rub together. There's been times that I've not had that I've not had food, that I've not had nothing, friends, but I have never done I have never gone without not something to eat or the things that I needed today. Let me tell you the scripture tells us, he said he will furnish us with all of our needs. You know, and they, they get a big tickle out of this. They even got a big tickle out of it one day. They bought me a matchbox car at church one day. But I, I've always, I thought, boys, I'd love to have me a big Corvette one day. I'd love to have me a big shiny Corvette sitting in my driveway. You know, old or new, it doesn't matter. But you know, I thought, He's never gave me a Corvette, but I want you to know this morning He has given me everything that I need today when the Apostle Paul says, for He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask of Him today. I want you to know today, God asked us to do one thing today, and that is to believe upon Him. Amen. You know, it's not the sin that's going to take us to hell. It's unbelief is what's going to take us to hell one day. It's unbelief. You know, I've heard people say, and I've, and I've said it myself, Myself also as well. I, when I was lost out in this world, when I was lost, and someone say, "Does thou believest in the Son of God?" Well, yeah, I believe. I heard Brother Edmund Hickman say one day. He said, "There's 18 inches between believing from here to here this morning." You've got to believe in thine heart today that Jesus died, that He rose again on the third and appointed day for you and I. 
I want you to know this morning, real quick before I close this morning, there is a man. There is a man come to Jesus one day. He said he had a son with a dumb spirit today. He says, Lord, can thou help him? And I'm trying to paraphrase this the best I can. He says, Lord, can thou help him? He says, I went to the disciples. He said, I went to the disciples and they turned me away. They couldn't do anything. The Lord said, how, how, how long has this child been this way? You know, how long have you and I thought and have we wrestled with so many things before in our lives when all we got to do is turn it over to the Lord Jesus this morning? How many times? I've wondered and I've thought and I've wondered so many times. I thought, I wonder how many times God has looked down upon me, how Jesus has looked down upon me. Son, why are you doing this to yourself today? I'm right here. Call upon me today and I will be there with you. I will take care of you. I want you to know this morning when the Lord, when He said, how long has this child been this way? The Lord said for the Spirit to leave, to, ex to come out of him. You know what it done? It came right out of him. When the disciples came up to Jesus, he says, Lord, why did this not happen? Well, I'll tell you one thing today, and this is what's so failing in our churches and in our communities today. The disciples didn't say nothing about Jesus Christ. They didn't send him to Jesus this morning. How he took him to Jesus. Friends, there's so many of us today, and I'm saying so many of us today, we're so lacking in telling people about our Lord Jesus Christ today. we got to be leading the world today to Jesus Christ today. I don't have hope in this. I don't have hope in our president. I don't have hope in the Republican Party. I don't have hope in the Democratic Party. My hope is in Jesus Christ this morning because He's the one that I'm going to answer to one of these days. But I want you to know this morning when the Lord looked the disciples, he said, anything, any, he said, anything can come by thee by prayer and fasting today. By prayer and fasting this morning. You know, I love, and I tell this story at Davisport all the time. I love it when Peter was out on the boat that night. As he was out on the boat, he seen the Lord over on the shore. And he says, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come. And the Lord Jesus said, Come. How Peter got up and he started walking across the water. The Bible tells us the water began to get rough, began to get boisterous. And Peter got scared and he took his eyes off the Lord. He began to sing. That's the very same thing that you and I do when we take our eyes off the Lord. We begin to sing. We begin to sing. We got to fast upon Him this morning. We got to keep our eyes focused upon the Lord Jesus today. I want you to know today, I'm looking for Him one day. I'm looking. You know, as you and I as Christians this morning, the greatest day of our lives is the day that we leave this world and we enter into the new one over there when we go and we meet Jesus Christ today. Amen. I want to stay here as long as I possibly can. It is, I'd love to stay here just as long as I can. But friends, let me tell you something. When God says it's time, it's time. Amen. It's time. It's one heartbeat away when God says it's time. I don't, you know, people's people's tell people's going about. There's, there's people's running scared. They're talking about COVID. They're so scared of COVID today. And Lord, have mercy. I'm gonna get on this for a minute. You just bear with me for a moment. But I want you to know when Jesus spoke in the 24th chapter of Matthew, he says, "Learn a parable." He didn't say he spoke a parable. He said, "Learn a parable of the fig tree." He talked about the summer being ended. Let me tell you, he was talking. About He says, what will you gain the whole world and lose your own soul today? Let me tell you, friends, what is it worth today? What is it worth? He says, lay it for yourselves treasures in, lay it for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt. But they're doing just the opposite. He says, lay not up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, where thieves can break through and steal. People's, you see people's treasure. They're putting their treasure on this side today. Our treasure is in Jesus Christ this morning. He's our only hope today. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. I'm so thankful this morning that I'm on the winning side. 
I'm so thankful one day that I'm going to see a risen Savior one day. To Peter tells us, and I'm going to quickly close, but Peter tells us, he said, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is the one day. Time holds no value to God. You see, time is nothing to Him. We're going to a place where time will be no more. I can't imagine going to a place, friends, where there's not going to be no hurting, no sorrow or anything. Anything bothering us. And best of all, the best of all, separation. You know, my biggest fear that I have on this side, and I pray that my boys are back there listening to every word of this right now. My biggest fear that I have on this side is separation from my family. Separation from my loved ones. Because you see, I'm going there one day. I set in my heart 15 years ago that I'm going to heaven one day. Separation is the worst thing that could ever happen to you and I. But Peter said, Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. One day with the Lord is a thousand years, a thousand years is to one day. He says, But the Lord is not slack concerned in His promises. Some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and have everlasting life. He says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He said, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He says, for the heavens, he said, the heavens shall vanish with a loud noise and the earth and the elements thereof shall be burned up. You see, everything that we're working for and we're laboring for down here. I want nice things down here. I like having a nice car to drive. I like having a nice home. But you see, all of these things down here doesn't matter. It's all going to be burned up one day. It's what Peter is saying. Amen. He says, but one day with the Lord, I want you to know one day. He's coming back. And He's coming back after you and I today. He's coming back after a church without spot and without blemish. And may God bless you. As our prayers, I'm going to turn it back over to the pastor. Amen. Amen. Amen.